On this channel, I like to cover free, useful plugins for WordPress, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at Fluent Auth, which has recently released 2.0. This brings with it some key new features, and those are the kinds of things I want to focus on today. So I'll briefly go over some of the older features just to kind of get you up to speed if you're new to this plugin, but more focus is going to be placed on these new features. And if you are using this plugin, why well, you may want to take a look at these features again. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the plugin, what it offers. First thing you're going to want to do, hop over into your plugin section inside your WordPress website, search for Fluent Auth, install it, activate it, and this is where you'll be, ready to go into the settings section and configure everything. So let's do just that. Let's configure Fluent Auth, and you can see things are broken down across the top in various different tabs. We've jumped into the settings section, which we will take a look at in a moment. Let's just jump into the dashboard first of all. This is going to give you an overview of various different aspects of whatever you set up inside Fluent Auth. And Fluent Auth is there to help you with improving security on your WordPress website, but also a lot of extra new features, especially ones that have been brought in in 2.0. You can see we've got things like in the last seven days, how many failed login attempts, block login, successful logins, and so on. We can get a sort of visual representation of this as your site starts to get logins and things, and also some of the options which either are enabled or not, and these are more generally kind of configured towards the security side of things. So like disabling the XML RPC function and so on, which are generally going to be disabled in most use cases, and most security plugins will want you to do that. So this is kind of doing the same thing. So we've seen the dashboard. Let's go in and take a look at the settings section. Logs, pretty self-explanatory. So this is where we started off. Now we can use the apply recommended settings if we want to, but let's just quickly go through some of these options. So things like disable XML RPC, like we've already talked about, I'll generally enable that function to disable that function, as it were. Disable app login, REST API of remote access. Now I'm not going to worry about things like that. I don't want any sort of remote access. And disable the REST endpoint for WP users, query for public. Again, I'm going to disable that. Then we've got the replace default sign up with a secure version. Now this is if you are allowing people to sign up and register on your website, this is something that is quite useful. Basically, what it does is it replaces the default kind of registration form, which just includes like a username, email, and password with some extra options. Plus, it also sends an email out with a unique code to confirm that anybody that's trying to register on your site, that email address exists. They have to confirm it by using the code that's generated, and only then will the new user be registered on your website. Should cut down on those automated bots and all those kinds of issues that come with it. You can see here we've got an example. So we've got this full name, password, and re-enter password. And like I say, you'll then have a code which you'll have to put in once you've registered. So in general, if you are letting people sign up for your website, I would recommend enabling that function. It's pretty useful. Then you've got things like login security settings, so you can limit the number of attempts anybody can try to use to log into your website to avoid this kind of brute force kind of problems to the number of times they can try with an incorrect username and or email or password. And then you can specify how long they're logged out before they can actually try to log in again. So again, set that up as you want. Most security plugins will have this kind of thing enabled. So if you use this alongside a security plugin, choose one or the other. Extended login options, enable magic login, enable two-factor authentication via email. Generally, I would say two-factor authentication is definitely something you want to enable on your website to again, increase that level of security. Then you've got some email settings. So send email notification if any of the following user roles log in. So you can choose the user roles that you have set up and then specify emails will be sent out and so on. Useful kinds of things. It's up to you if you want to use them. And then you've got also things like disable the admin bar inside the WP admin and you can specify what user roles this actually applies to. And I'm going to save our settings and you kind of get the idea. Most of these are relatively self-explanatory. Then we've got one of the new features, which is the login and sign up forms. This now allows you to easily customize the login page and the registration page and so on. So you can enable this function and then we can open up the customizer and we now get this customizer screen. So we can customize the left and the right hand sides of this information. So we've got the banner on the left hand side. We can click to make changes here. So you can see we can add text inside here. We can upload a logo, apply a description if we want to. I'm going to get rid of all those things because I just want that nice and clean and plain. And then you can upload an image to make it look a little bit prettier. Let's use this one. Why not? You can set a background color, title color, text color if you're using those here. Up to you if you want to. Come back to your 
settings, come into your form this time, and we can edit our form. And then this is what you see over on the right hand side. So let's just say login, get rid of that very long title. And you can see we can put a description in should we want to as well. Come back out of this, want to flip these around, you can simply click that and now you get your picture on the right hand side, your content on the left. Come to the sign up form and you can basically do exactly the same thing here. And again, you can see we've got those options for the password, re enter password and your full name and so on, what we set up inside the settings section. Hit save changes and now we have an updated version. Here's a good example. Again, let's save this. Let's jump over now and take a look at how this looks. So this is what we started off with. Let's refresh the page. And this is what we now have a much nicer branded kind of sign up registration page, login page and so on. So it already looks a lot nicer. And again, another one of those nice little reasons where that's one less plugin or one less sort of manual thing you have to do to change the way this all looks. So now it just kind of looks a lot nicer and more pro and a lot less WordPress. On top of this, you've also got options to enable social login and social signups. So if you enable this, you can see we can log in with GitHub, Google settings, and new this time is login with Facebook. So if you enable this, you've got some options you're gonna to need to configure, and also jump through a few hoops on Facebook to get this all set up. I'm not the biggest fan of doing this kind of thing, so I would generally leave this disabled, but if you have a need for it, you can now do that and include Facebook using Fluent Auth 2.0. You've also got login form and sign up form short codes. So if you want to create kind of custom pages, you can use these short codes and do various different things. So again, you can apply more customization inside you no matter what kind of theme or setup you're using. Again, I'm going to disable that and leave it as it is. You've got login redirects, which allows you to have custom login redirects. So if again, if you want to set this up, you can choose where you want to redirect people to, and you can also add in advanced rules. So you can set a user role, user capability, choose the roles you've got here, or as the name suggests, the capabilities. And then you can customize where anybody with those roles or capabilities are actually going to be forward to for login and log out. So you've got Again, full control over those options. Let's disable that. The other big feature that I think is incredibly useful and something that I'm surprised we don't have available inside WordPress or in more plugins is this system email customizer. This is so nice. And this is one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to do this video and bring this to you today, because I think this is really overlooked at how useful this can be, especially if you're running a professional website or community or something like that, where you want Anybody that signs up to have a more personalized, branded kind of experience for anything that happens when they sign up, they get a branded email. When they have a password request, instead of just having a single line of text, there's something a bit more branded and pro. So to start off with, we've got a couple of things we can do. First of all, we can globally set the template settings. So you can set your background color, your highlight background, content background, and so on. And then we've got a little preview underneath of what this would look like. And you can also customize the footer text, the send from email, reply to, and so on. So these are the default values that all of the emails that are sent out will actually adopt. I'm going to leave those as they are. You can change those to whatever you would want. What I'm more interested in though is these system emails to send to user. So these are the default things you're going to see, like a new user registration, password request, email change, and so on. So you've got system defaults are currently being used, but we can simply come into any of these, choose the edit option, and we can switch between the system default or a fully customized email. So now you can customize this in whatever way you want. But the big thing here for me, which makes this much more useful and much more usable, is if you've ever used any of the other Fluent tools like Fluent CRM and so on, we've got smart codes. And smart codes allow us to reference various different parts of our WordPress setup. You can see there's a couple in use here already. So hello, user display name, site title, and so on. These are smart codes that reference dynamic data that's part of your site. So if we go into the add smart codes, you can see we've got user data and a bunch of user data information here and site data. So again, a bunch of information here, including things like the login URL and so on. Same thing goes for our title. So we could personalize this. So site title, set up your password, not very personal. So let's just put, hey, we want their username, for example. We'll click on smart code and we'll say first name. So now it'll say the site title, hey, Paul, set up your password, a little bit nicer. Again, then we can customize all of this. And then when you're ready, you can preview it to see what it's going to look like when they receive it. And already looks a lot better than the kind of garbage that you get sent by default from WordPress. But again, like I say, everything is fully customizable. Once you're happy, you hit save settings. 
come back out and you can see now it tells us the new user registration notification is active and we're using our own custom one. And then you've got the system emails that are sent to the site admin. So when someone signs up on your site, the admin would generally get an email. Well, again, you can customize this. And uh, you can see we can use disable, get rid of it completely, system default, or we can customize the content. And again, you see we've got all those kind of short codes or smart codes available to us and everything just looks a lot nicer. So from my point of view, I think that's a really nice way of just improving the user experience for anybody that registers or enrolls on your website. And finally, you've got your security scans. Now, I don't have this enabled on this website, and all you need to do is register to get an API key. It's completely free, as is all of this entire plugin. And this will then do things like monitor for any file changes and notify you if there are any changes, and also identify what those changes are in the file itself. Now, if you want more detail on some of the other features, including this file integrity check, I would recommend checking out Jewel's video that he released today. I'll link that down in the description down below so you can check that out. And he goes over some of the other things that I maybe haven't covered in this particular video. But all in all, I think Fluent Auth 2.0 brings a lot of nice, useful little features on top of what it already had. The customization for the, both the login and registration and also the system emails, in my opinion, is really, really nice to have, especially in a completely free plugin like this. But as always, I pass it over to you. What are your thoughts on this? Do you use it? Would this make you use it? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.